One of the things we're going to try in order to uh, improve communication around the university is for me to do a monthly video update. And uh, in this news at, we will have the first of those updates. Um, what I'll be talking about this time is our new codes of conduct, the research code of conduct and the staff code of conduct. And they're important matters and uh, I urge you to take them seriously and familiarise yourself with them. Very soon you'll be receiving an updated version of our B2B document which has the grand title Blueprint to Beyond, although I rather refer to it as Bench to Bedside or Bench to Business. That document sets out our strategic intent, where we want to go as a university uh, and how we plan to get there. But it also lists a number of very important guiding principles which talk about how we will behave as we seek to achieve our goals. And just as we have revised and updated the B2B document itself, so have we updated the guiding principles. And uh, you'll shortly receive those in hard copy and on the website. Now those guiding principles come, cover a number of aspects of important behaviour. Integrity and high ethical standards, mutual respect, professionalism, accountability, and uh, collegiality. And it's imperative that we're guided by these principles as we pursue our aspiration to be a leading university, a peer of the best in the world. So how we conduct ourselves in research, in teaching and as staff members is going to be critical. And in order to help set that out, we've developed two codes of conduct. One for research and one for staff. Firstly, research. When it comes to research, our reputation does depend on us following the highest standards of professionalism. And the new research code of conduct sets out the standards that we expect. The standards in four parts. The first part is the code itself. And this talks about how researchers need to conduct their activities in an ethical and in a professional manner as they go about their work. Now that code applies to everybody in research, research students, our full-time staff, our conjoints and our visiting staff. The next three parts are procedures underpinning the code. The first is about authorship and how we're going to resolve disputes between uh, authors. The second deals with record keeping and the important requirements that we retain and we restore the data. And the third deals with how the university al handles allegations of research misconduct. Uh, there are links to that code in this message and I urge all of you to read the new documents in full. The second document is a revised staff code of conduct which will be effective from June 1st, 2009. And that again sets out standard of behaviour for all staff and affiliates of the university. It's important because it tells you what's expected of you and what you can expect from others. It's a one-stop shop for all ethical and conduct issues because from that code you can get links to all of the other more specific policies uh, that affect behaviour. It's aligned with the guiding principles in our strategic intent in the B2B document and it was produced after extensive consultation with members of staff as well as at council and in other forums of the university. All staff and affiliated staff are expected to be familiar with and comply with this new code of conduct. So I thank you for your attention to these important matters. I do urge you to read them, uh, to go onto the website and I look forward to meeting with you at our next town hall meetings in the faculties and the divisions over the coming months.